Alright, uh, welcome back to my little Metroidvania tutorial uh, series thing. Um, this last part, I, I actually just want to talk about moving past Metroidvania levels. Moving um, beyond it. Right, because okay, so like in any in any creative uh, endeavor, it's important to keep in mind that genres are genres are tools to describe what we've already done. They're not really meant to tell us what we should be doing, right? I think is a good way to think about it. So we we know. Now, what goes into a Metroidvania level, we, we know how to make them. We are masters of the craft. Um, but we should just learn from that and use it to inform what we might want to do in the future, but it not use it as, as a rule set of, of what we plan to make in levels, right? There's a lot... To, uh, to be done in just taking the concepts and running with them in wildly different directions. And I just want to look at a few examples of that, but I mean, by its very nature, there's an infinite number of examples, more or less, right? You can... Um, it, it's just one more thing. As with anything else, each level is its own thing. As with any other style of thing, um, what the fuck am I trying to say? You're, <laughs> you should, you shouldn't necessarily set out to make this type of level. You should be like, all right, let's just make a level. And this is the wealth of inspiration behind me that's going into the level. So let's just look at some examples. I've got some from myself and some from other people. Um, I'm just going to quickly, uh, look through. Uh, and see how, how you can move beyond the genre tags and, and make things that are clearly in the vein of Metroidvania design, but that are not your run-of-the-mill Metroidvania. So this, this is Grove of the Hydra Worms, and I think this is probably the best level uh, I've ever made, or very close to it. Um, it's a Metroidvania level, kind of. It's really, it's a, it's a red coin collection level. Um, at its heart But it's it's kind of powered by the progression right so to start off you have to get the mushroom uh, To get the pal out of the pipe and then the pal allows you to kill the munchers and you can go that way Where there's some a coin you can get and some stuff or you can go in here which actually does this um, does These mini games Just kind of thrown in the level where, oh god, this is really hard without my glasses on. Everything's fuzzy. Um, where you just have, uh, you know, bouncing on bombs, waiting for them to open up the cannon to allow you to leave on the cloud. To get up there, which gets you your, um, your checkpoint, and now you have access to uh, Fire Flower. Right? Um, which gives you access to more coins and shit you can open up. There's a dude up there. Then you have another one of those. After you get the firefly, you can open that up. And you have another one, which you can fall to your, de your, your death on. Uh, this is just, wow. Yeah, okay, fuck that. You bounce on the dudes back and forth, and they stand up in the spot where you bounced on them, and you wait for the dude to come down, and the piece switch to go through, and another checkpoint. Um, and from here, you have access to piece switches, and also... That guy opens up uh, this pipe. So now it actually... Um, nailed it. It actually becomes an infinite checkpoint red coin level. As long as, as long as you remember to, um, every time you hit that one, to come hit this one again. Oops. To come hit the second one again, right? 
You wanna it's not it's not a flawless system. <laughs> it's not it's not it's not without its uh issues. To come hit that one again so that it remembers that you're uh at that stage in the level, right? But now now the level is transformed into an infinite checkpoint coin collection. Um and the P switches give you access to the propellers. So now you have all the items available. P switch pow, propeller, fire flower. And you can finish exploring all of the remaining areas um, to get all of the remaining coins, including this one uh, back at the start. I always uh, get stuck on. We need the, the pow and the propeller to get up there and get it. Um, so yeah, that's that. That very, very bizarre combination of elements in my opinion. It's red coin exploration and metroidvania progression and two weird survival bouncing mini games kind of jammed in there. Uh, but it, it all kind of clicks in my opinion. So that's a thing. That's not what I wanted to do. That's a, that's a thing right there. Um, kind of expanding upon the core concept. This one, this one's not by me, this is, um, Kevin's level. Uh, th this one, this one is amazing. So this is for a, a contest, uh, where the, the only rule was that the level had to have exactly 100 coins that could be collected. Um, so it's like an optional, uh, bonus objective, right? Where you can play a level normally, or you can collect all 100 coins. Well, this dude took that idea and ran with it. This is actually a traditional Mario level. You you go right, um, and you just keep going right. Um, there's a sub-world where you go right, just trust me. And then you come out, and you go right. Here, you actually do have to go up to get um, giant boots, which allow you to go in here. Or you could jump over that um, if you want. It's a bit more difficult. And you work, this is just a room that you work through, but it's, for the most part, it's a go right level with very minor diversions. Very nicely done traditional Mario level. Very fun. These moles are fucking terrifying. Uh, they, they don't, they might not seem like it just looking at them, but they're terrifying. They just, see how, how they bound out like super quickly and it's hard to navigate on the ice and they're just, ah. You, you really got to play it. This level is a treat. What, what really um, kills it for me, it knocks it out of the park, is that in order to actually get all 100 coins, the level transforms into a Metroidvania, actually. It tra the whole level transforms into a Metroidvania. Um, and I'd really recommend... I'm going to put the code in the description. I'd really recommend just playing it yourself. I'm not going to spoil the whole thing. But it it goes in some directions. You there's no checkpoints. So you gotta really like um, probably do a couple runs figuring out where to go. Not not no checkpoints. There are checkpoints, but um, if you're trying to get all 100 coins in one uh, thing, that wouldn't help you any. So you gotta you gotta you gotta hoof it. But there's there's some really um, It's a bad example because I don't I don't want to spoil exactly uh, how to do it. But you end up backtracking a lot, going back and forth, hitting all these um, different areas that normally you would never you would never go to if you just played the level normally. But if you want to get all 100 coins, you end up re going to all these crazy far corners, getting all these different items, and it all comes together in a very cohesive, very interesting. Um, very compelling Metroidvania. Uh, when you finally get to the final areas, when you finally, finally see the face of the true ending before you, it's, it's, I don't know. It has a special feeling. It has a special feeling for me. The level is, is wonderful, wonderful piece of design. Uh, excellent, excellent use of the, uh, concept. I, I think I, I want to do some of those one day, and I, I strongly encourage other people to do it because it's a very it's a very interesting idea to have a level that's normal, 
Unless you'd rather play it as a Metroidvania in order to achieve a bonus goal. That That's such a cool concept. Um, okay, what, what, what else are we going to do? We've got... Um, this is actually a stand-in. There's there's a like separate genre of, le of level that has arisen, which is basically Zelda levels, right? And Zelda Dungeon Zelda as a as a series is is kind of kind of similar to uh, Metroidvania, right? You could do a you could make a strong case or a strong um, comparison and contrast between the two. But this is, um, the Wombat's done a whole series, I just picked this one out, um, just cause, just cause it's got some really strong, uh, Metroidvania, uh, overtones, but this is, he's basically recreating all of Ocarina of Time, uh, in the new Super Mario Brothers style in Mario Maker, and this is the, the Water Temple, which, obviously, if anybody is familiar with, uh, the Water Temple, you're... You can imagine how it winds upon itself and, and you revisit these areas with new things uh, available to you. Um, so this is kind of a stand-in for, for that whole genre of, of Zelda dungeon level design. Just look at, look at Zelda dungeons. Look at what people have done to try to emulate them. Look at some of them yourself and try to emulate them. Because they, they unfold, it's not quite Metroidvania, but it's reminiscent of it, right? It's re the circularity and the doing things to unlock new things. It's certainly very reminiscent of the genre. Uh, and sometimes it goes full-fledged um, Metroidvania. This is one of his more metroidvania E levels in the style. Um, but there's, there's, there's flourishes of it throughout his and other people's uh, Zelda dungeons. So that that's that definitely deserves a mention if we're talking about how to explore the concept of the genre further. Um, I'm trying I'm trying to like blow through these but also hit um, several. This one's kind of uh, neat to me. Because it, it's like it's just it's just it starts out totally normal Metroidvania, nothing noteworthy. Um, in terms of moving beyond the genre, uh, also this is kind of a neat door, by the way. I didn't mention it in the doors thing, but um, this is the end of the first chunk. Is whoops, I fucked it up. The end of the first chunk. <laughs> is trying to get in this pipe, and once you finally get in it... Uh... You're over... Wow, I fucked it up twice. Well, that, that... How did... I've never fucked that up until this exact moment. It's pretty embarrassing. But, um, that pushes you through there to get in. So that... Using blocks on tracks that you have to get to a certain place to activate, you can actually activate them... You can't activate them from here. Um, but you can activate them from here, but it doesn't matter because zone transitions. So as long as you watch that, uh, those are a pretty cool sort of obstacle. But the, what's noteworthy about this one is that this middle section of the level is a red coin hunt that is completely uh, non-linear and actually doesn't have a set solution. Um... Like, there, there are several ways to get pretty much all of these uh, coins. Where's, where's the rest of it? There's also this area. All of these coins have multiple um, ways. There's, there's a massive number of approaches to getting through uh, this area. And I, the level still is zero clears, and I'm, I'm kind of thinking this might be to blame, honestly, because the level goes from being, like, somewhat intelligible metroidvania to just like well here's items and shit have fun find the coins um so maybe a bit of a cautionary tale as well but you can just throw just pure open-endedness in the middle of your level um as kind of a, a way to 
I don't know. To, to, to move beyond just the, the progression kind of framework. All that's to get out um, here. And there's fire in, in that area, um, which you can now take out with you once you have the key to go back into a typical Metroidvania stuff. Stuff, right? So that's... That's another thing. That's another thing. What else we got? We've got the... Um, Dungeon Delver, where, 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 which one do I want to look at? Let's do, let's do this one. Um, so this is a series I'm doing. This is very, very removed from Metroidvania uh, as a genre. I gotta stop saying Metroidvania, 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 Metroidvania. Um, <laughs> this is very much like adventure platforming adventure platforming like this is super adventure -y. uh it's an infinite checkpoint coin collection level but you have this big overworld um and then you have these dungeons that are marked by the uh the coins at the entrance this is sort of like the weeding business concept where you go in the dungeons in any order but each of these has a coin um and that's the entire level. The entire level is just going to the dungeons. In this one, I think I think there's six in this one. Uh, yeah, six plus the the safety coin by the door that everybody always grabs anyways. But you remember safety coins by your doors, okay? If there's checkpoints involved, don't want them losing that key. Players are dumb; they'll grab the safety coin anyways. But all you can do as a designer is give it to them. Um, and yeah, you just go through the, uh, the piano started downstairs and it's distracting me. Go through the dungeons and do stuff. And then there's also um, shit in the overworld. There's bonus items. So you can get like wing boot uh, if you want that. There's different ways to get a feather. There's actually back doors to some of the dungeons, like this skips some really tough jumps in one dungeon, um, and this skips an entire dungeon if you go get the spiked helmet and a, a pow to get in. The spiked helmet itself is over here. Um, and we can, oops, that's not what I wanted to do at all. I wanted to go to the, so we'll just kind of look at the dungeons a bit but yeah kind of a kind of a neat concept that it it scratches similar itches it's very much a different uh species but i feel like it, it scratches similar itches and that it's heavy exploration heavy uh player freedom heavy non-linearity uh and some of the uh the bonus loot the ways to get it the ways to use it has flourishes of power progressions, but for the most part, it's just, you know, um, letting the player wander. But it, I feel like that's a, a similar sort of vibe. Um, what else is there? Kind of want to call it, but see if there's anything else to mention. Uh, we don't need to go into this, but like, like, even simple things like Caldera Gauntlet, um, the third act, it turns into like a shooter level, like an R-type, basically. Got You're in a f fire clown car, flying around, shooting down other ships, and then that goes into a boss battle. Like, you can just do a complete genre shift in the middle of your thing. Um... Mario's Weeding Business Day 6, the, the second act, is a one-screen puzzle just out of nowhere. That also happened in Day 5 as well, actually, now that I think about it. Um, I think I talked about all the other people's levels that I wanted to get in there. Um, there was one I wanted to talk about as a negative example, but I actually couldn't find the... Uh, I couldn't find it again. But it, it was basically just like hallways, uh, really nondescript, non-decorated hallways full of question blocks. And some of them were bad and some of them were good. Uh, they, the good ones just had keys, basically. And it was just find the keys. 
with basically the entire level. Just running around, finding keys. Sometimes there are items used to get through, but it, it was a similar concept of run around, find the things, and do the things, except everything was in plain sight, but 90% of the things were bad for you. Um, and it, was, it all looked the same. It was all confusing. It was definitely a fresh take on the concept. It was not enjoyable. Um, here we have... Um, a four screen metroidvania it's just four screens really tight really compact um you know there's a lot there's a lot you can do with the concept of the player going on an adventure going on a quest finding shit and uh using it to explore more and more terrain there's a lot that can be done with that concept and really i think that's what uh i want people to take away from the tutorials, that it's a very powerful design tool. It's a very captivating design tool. It makes for very memorable, fun gameplay. And people need to use more of it. So use more of it. Um, and that is my message to you. So thank you if you stuck through to the end or if you watched any parts of this. I do appreciate it. I hope you found something of worth in this uh, in this thing that has occurred to you. Alright, goodbye. Go away.